Carmel High School is up to bat next. The Central Region is our second series to close out the day. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, it's essentially this. Carmel High School is playing against themselves at this moment. You have Carmel High School Greyhounds in blue and the Greyhounds in gold. I have to think that the Greyhounds are favored in this matchup. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, looking at the Greyhounds, I, I definitely say that, that they're the team to beat here. Uh, it's, it's going to be a fun series either way. Obviously, the you know congratulations to the coach for coaching two teams all the way to uh, the finals here now to, to duke it out for ultimate bragging rights in the halls, I suppose. Absolutely. Let's get into game one. Again, another best of seven series. You guys know the deal, but there's, there's not much to discuss. I mean, the winner of this... The, it's the school. The school wins. It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters for the players, sure. But at the, at the end of the day, the school will be the champion of the Central Region. So in uh, the normal Greyhound gold roster is Jack Snoob and Evil. They will be playing on the blue side of the field for this series. On the other side, the blue roster will be playing in orange, which is real, I want to say real eel gamer, uh, Pearl and Minister. So that's just kind of how we sit regardless of how this series goes all we know is that the winner of the central region and the high school champions will be carmel high school so that's gotta feel good but for these players obviously seeing each other around the hallways possibly in class together it's definitely some bragging rights on the table oh absolutely and especially in in high school where you know one joke could you know you never hear the end of it at that point <laughs> so uh, this is going to be a fun series to watch for sure. Of course, apologies in advance for the you know the amount of times I'm going to call these schools by or these two teams rather by the the wrong name because again, blue is orange and orange is no wait, did I say that right? One of the teams scored. Gold, <laughs> gold, okay, gold, gold is orange it. and blue is blue no, no, is no. no blue is orange and gold is blue. There we yes, go. Yes, so, yes. Okay. It's a it's a color hurrah today but all we know is that Greyhound gold will strike first and that's what matters the most so they'll come off with a 1-0 lead here still in game number one again this series we saw best we saw all seven last time around in the series prior we just saw the conclusion of Cannon School versus John Carroll of the eastern region and of course it was Cannon who walked away with the win they were down 3-2 they bounced back and win the last two however Jack's trying to center that one out for Greyhound gold but we go back the other way and Minister T-Rex going to try to center for a teammate. But off the start, we saw a bump through the net that led open to that opening goal. And if we continue to see that physicality, I mean, it could be a very quick day for some of these teams. And you've got to imagine that, you know, these two uh, teams being from the same school, they've got to have a lot of, you know, server scrim time against one for another, sure. you think, right? So yeah. uh, a lot of mind games could come through here now that uh, the finals are on the line between these two teams, you know, once friends, now rivals. Absolutely. And again, you know, like we talk about, right? Like you're in high school together. There's, there's a lot that <laughs> they could be on the table in terms of bragging rights. But just being able to, like, you know, show up to what, what do they have in high school? It's been so long. I don't know. Like different lunch days, you just show up and say, "Hey, remember when I beat you in Rocket League?" Speaking of which, remember when Evil scored the second goal? It was Snoop who kind of sets this one up. Jax with the touch and the 50 win, and then Evil comes out of no man's land and gets the goal. So Greyhound gold off the start, looking very good up 2-0. Gold looking really good. Yeah, Jax hasn't been impressive so far. He's been a dominant force in the offensive zone. First with, you know, a goal where he puts it on net and then plays the body. I like to see those kind of goals come through. There's a lot more to it than just shooting it as hard as you can sometimes in Rocket League. And, and then he comes in winning that 50. You can tell he's going to be an aggressive player in this series, and we'll see if he can continue to light things up for his team in the offensive zone. 234 and counting. This one goes back down to the ground. Greyhound gold with the lead. In the blue side, recentered, almost evil. Would have had a gold there, but a little bit off center on his initial jump. And we go to the corner with it. Two minutes to go. Jack's going to recenter that one back down. Here was the cross. No one going to be there. For Greyhound Blue, though, we haven't talked a lot about this team. Real deal gamer, Pearl and Minister T Rex. They haven't spent a lot of time in the blue half. They haven't talked a lot about Real Deal or Pearl. Only 56 points so far, so not a whole lot that they've you know, contributed to the field thus far. But it's only one game in the series, still seven to go. And Evil, Jax, through the corner we go. Jax with the center, intercepted. So Greyhound Blue doing a great job of taking the ball away in those corners. But when it comes to equating that to a push against the other side of the field, seem to struggle. 
Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of, you know, continued offense being generated from Greyhound Blue. They're getting, you know, maybe one shot in. Uh, it'd be nice to see them, you know, try to maintain a little bit of pressure the same way that Gold is doing to them. You see the rotations coming in from Gold right now, and they're just controlling the ball in the offensive zone, and eventually you're going to be rewarded for that kind of play. Certainly will. Minute 10 to go. So much time left on this clock, but you, you desperately need a goal at some point. Whether the storm with the Greyhound gold. As they keep pushing this ball up through midfield. Evil going to circle back around, runs into his teammate on the process. There's a shot, there's a goal. Greyhound Blue finally finding their first. And that could be the spark that they need here. There's 50 seconds left, so... Definitely a lot, a lot of in-game time for them to at least mount some kind of comeback, but they're going to need uh, at least some good pressure here off the draw, I'm thinking, because Greyhound Gold has just been eating up the clock in their zone. Certainly have. Again, all it takes is just one or two moments in this game, and you could be looking at a tie game. We're still only in game one of the series. Jax won't get the follow-up. Now the breakaway chance, taken away by Evil. Shut down that lane. Circles back into the play. Finds the rebound as well. Slowing at midfield. One cleared out. Minister T-Rex. Numbers advantage to Greyhound Blue. That one will hang a little bit too long. Jax will take it out. 15 seconds to go. Here's the clear. Here's the extension. Here's the touch. And he goes back to the ceiling. There's the goal. Oh, it only yeah. took a matter of time and Pearl tied up. I mean, I, I just didn't expect this out of nowhere. You got three trapped in the corner, so you can see that, you know, the desperation was in there from Greyhound Blue, and Pearl's just going to be the beneficiary of a good bounce. You got to be in the right areas and be towards the net to get rewarded like that. And good on Pearl for it. I, it's going to be likely an overtime story here in game one. Evil will move this one up the sideline. Keeping this ball up is the cross there. It was, wouldn't have been on target regardless. Ran out of time. We go to OT here in game one. I'm sure these these rosters have seen this many times. Winning the oh, kickoff no. and winning the second touch. Well, we waste no time. Four seconds into OT and the Greyhound goal take game one. Yeah, and Evil just plays this as well as he could. Real deal, couldn't really get much on that. And that was very similar to the first goal. Jax, you know, realized that yep. the defender was in a rough spot already and then just made their life harder by bumping them. So uh, I like to see goals like that. I really love to see the creativity there. Uh, a really fun first game there from both sides. Yeah, no, it's certainly uh, an impressive showing in that OT. Again, four seconds, you win the kickoff and uh, you extend and find ways to just get a little creative. Evil, stand out in game one. Let's get into game two. Both these rosters probably have a lot of history against one another, so a lot of it is a mental game, understanding that you know how they're both going to play and how you can beat them in the small details is essentially where you'll see Greyhound Gold or the blue side of the field really uh, come away with a victory, but it's a game one win. The Greyhound Gold, they're up 1-0 in the series. Let's see if they can continue that same success here in game two. Now, I know it's been a bit, since I've uh, been on the mic for Rocket League. I have been keeping up, uh, you know, here and there as much as I can. Is it a rarity that there's only one Octane in the server right now? Uh, usually, yeah, that's probably a rarity. I mean, the Dominus certainly has its, its hardcore fans. Uh, I, you know, it's we've seen a lot of interesting cars this weekend, but uh, I think that certainly that is a, a non-traditional approach to the game. Usually you're looking at at least three or four Octanes, maybe a Dominus or two, and then, you know, Fennec used to be what everyone was running, but now it's usually only one Fennec a, a field. So uh, I think it is. Uh, it's keen eye there. It is an interesting point to note out that we are seeing a lot of Dominuses on the field at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, five Dominuses and one Octane, and I yeah. just I noticed that, and I'm like, I'm wondering how the influence of the players is on each other. Maybe, you know, through practice, they're all just like, oh, the Dominus. Y'all yeah. got to get on the Dominus train. Yeah, you just you never know, right? You never know what the oh, ooh, no. processes might be. That one was close, though. Again, the crossbar is the most notorious fourth man. Here comes a follow-up shot. Locked away front of the net. Jack's going to try to get it out to Evil. Crossed in. Keeps this one in the orange corner. About a minute burned here in game two. Poked out. That could be one. 
And again, the defense, even though it is a double commit for the Greyhounds Blue, it pays off and they survive the first wave of attack. And that is kind of one of the first rules of Rocket League when you're like just starting to play ranked and getting into competitive is that you want to try to double commit as little as possible. Um, obviously, when you get to the higher levels of play, there are situations like that one where a double commit's a pretty good idea, especially going on onto a save where you don't know exactly where they're going to go with the ball. Right. Um, interesting stuff, though, nonetheless. Another minute killed off the clock. No one scored just yet. Very different from game one. Jack's only 48 points. Now make it 50. Evil carrying to the other side. Real deal gamer will take it out. Nice bump. Centered for a teammate. Almost served it up. We go to midfield with it. Pearl going to follow in. And left out to one rotation. There's real deal. Almost the touch that you were looking for. But Jack's trying to get it over the last line. He'll do so for one. Here comes Evil. There's a shot. Saved away. Anyone else from Greyhound Gold thinking about coming up? No. We go back the other way. Snoob going to go up to the corner and get it. And that one actually... It's a little bit dangerous for Greyhound Gold. Because even though they have a 1-0 series lead, it doesn't seem like we will get the same situation here in game number two as they are so evenly matched on the field. And a lot of this comes down to the amount of reps these te two teams probably have against each other. But there's a shot, and the cross gets the good 50 win. It's Evil on the goal. And excuse me, it's Jax on the goal, but Evil with the assist. And that is what you can kind of sometimes come to expect of, of Rocket League. Greyhound Blues yeah. absolutely controlled the pace in the offensive zone. They're showing us a lot more in this game than they did in the previous. And then all of a sudden, the ball goes the other way for, what, 10 seconds? Jax has it in the back of the net. And all of a sudden, Greyhound Gold staring down the barrel of a potential 2-0 lead in the series. We'll certainly have so much time to kill, but you get closer and closer. Taking 2-0, series lead. We're going to keep this ball up. They've had pressure in the blue half, but we've only seen, what, one, two, or three possibly real good looks. There's a follow-up, a little bit off. Jax almost gets the assist. Evil, down. That's a shot, and that's a goal. Evil, done that a couple of times. I think he has five shots in the game and one goal. Still, it works out. Only 41 seconds between goals, but... That one was good enough for a 2 lead. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, definitely a good performance from Evil. He's been doing a really good job on the back check uh, and grabbing some demos there. Uh, and I really like the way that he's just anticipating these balls coming off the wall and really reading the entire field all at once. You know, he didn't have to do a super hard shot there. He just had to get it at the net, and he realized that. And so he'll be rewarded. And that might be a follow-up shot, but it... Without only a minute left, you're just putting icing on the cake now. As uh, Greyhound Blue have plenty of time to overcome this deficit, but the biggest problem is just that, you know, it has just been so back and forth. There's a cross. Almost. They've been looking for that for this series. 40 seconds to go. Snoop going to take it out. The cross comes in. Hard carrying for the moment. As Evil rotates back, five shots, one assist, three saves, and a goal to go with it. Make that another save. And that one off target, but again, it just kills time. Only 20 seconds or so left in this game. And even though it's a 2-0 lead, it looks like it might be a little bit too much for the moment for Greyhound Blue and Minister T-Rex to overcome. Unless you get the goal there, the demo works out, but these contests continue just to hurt their chances. And with 10 seconds to go, I think this game's done. Yeah, that's probably it. That's probably a GG's in the chat. And Greyhound Gold looking to take this 2-0. I mean, they're definitely off to a good start. They didn't drop their lead the way they did in the first game. And, uh, you know, it's been a, a, a little bit of fun there. Jack setting up, you know, his fellow uh, schoolmate there, just having a little bit of fun, realizing that, you know, the game's over. Let's let's put one in for the fans. And you like to see that. The camaraderie is still there, even though gold is definitely taking the lead here evil's really impressed me so far in this game i mean his visualization yeah. of the field and anticipation of what his opponents are going to do he's definitely i mean if there is mind games going into it like we keep alluding to evil is definitely you know um making the best of the situation oh yeah he has five saves he's reading through his progressions on the field 
Uh, he had a goal to go with it as well. So he's doing all the work on the defensive end, and then he's going on offense and able to uh, to score, which, again, is is a, is a big factor, right? So you have a two-way player on the field like Evil and Snoop, who was playing through the corner a bunch of times. But regardless of how this series plays out, it is important to note again that Carmel High School will be the winner of the Central Region for this Rocket League championship because, I mean, they're the only ones playing in it. It's just their high school team uh, for the gold, Greyhound Gold and Greyhound Blue. But... Uh, you know, going into this, uh, the Greyhound Gold are up 2-0 and moving into Game 3. Uh, your thoughts? Do you think we're going to see a 3-0 and a potentially a 4-0, or do you think we're going to be looking at a bounce back from the, the Greyhound Blue squad? From what I'm seeing, Gold does seem to have the edge in terms of team play and uh, potentially a little bit of mechanical advantage as well um, amongst the players. Uh, it's it's tough to say whether Blue's going to be able to, to bounce back in this one. They did in the first game, but I mean, it was all for naught. You know, they gave up the goal 30 seconds into overtime. So uh, it's just going to be a matter of the, the amount of resolve that they have. Are they going to be able to come out the gate firing here? They, they really do, I think, need to get the first goal in the game if they're expected to win. I think that's going to be a huge, huge key for them. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And it just comes down to establishing a rhythm at midfield. And if they're able to do that, then we're all good to go. So again, they're up 2-0 as the Greyhound Gold Squad is almost ready. I believe that they are looking to, uh, to obviously, they want to take this 3-0, right? Once you're up 3-0, that's kind of match point, series point at that moment. But uh, uh, game score predictions, you think we're going to see more than three goals or you think we're going to keep this one highly contested? I'm feeling like this one could be the game, you know, where the floodgates open between these two teams. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of creativity in the server with what we've seen sure. uh, from the players and, you know, the fact that five of which are rocking Dominuses. So uh, there's there's definitely room to play out on that field. And I, I think that this could definitely be uh, a very offensive battle moving forward. Absolutely. Let's get into game number three. Who is going to take... Well, they already have the series lead, but who's going to take an even bigger one? Will it be the Greyhound Gold or will the Greyhound Blue make it 2-1? At least for the moment, it seems like the momentum is on the Gold side. But still, four minutes to play, well, five minutes to play, but a couple of change and counting. And you just wonder, you know, you wonder if the, the Blue will have enough left in the tank to be able to bounce back. Or do Jackson squad have really all of this locked down, trying to flip over the last defender? Almost made it a 1-0 lead for the Greyhound gold, which would have been pretty detrimental to the Blues' chances. But still, these teams have played against each other, what I assume is almost on a weekly basis. So they must know that even with a lead, anything is possible and coming back. Absolutely, and we keep talking about it, but that that's really the interesting thing between these two teams. I mean, barring the fact that they are from the same school and in the finals together, um, you've got to imagine a school like this that has two teams of this caliber. Why wouldn't you take advantage of the amount of practice time you could get between these two guys? I mean, you know, it's, it's a self-serving purpose for your school to get better and both of your teams to get better just by playing against each other. Absolutely. About a minute gone now. Still, this one's much more highly contested, like we saw in the last game, where it really came down to like, the last two minutes or so before we started to see goals open up the field. This de decent little bump there. You go to the corner with it. There's a shot. There's a goal. As Pearl is there on the cross, they connect together, and Real Deal Gamer gets the assist. Yeah, Evil was in a rough spot here. He got caught backing up, and it's a really rough position to be in when you're hitting that reverse, uh, backing up near your net especially. So he did what he could with that ball, but good on Greyhound Blue to just realize the situation and say, hey, this is our best chance to strike, and they'll put one home and get that all-important first goal. That one drops down, and they're much more quick to, to recover on a lot of these hits now. So we'll see if they can rally this first goal into a second and possibly into a third. And they win this game. Of course, they'll be back in the series 2-1, trying to stave off a 3-0 lead for the Greyhound Gold. They're going to circle around. There's the cross. So dangerous and quick to the transition, but the swing just does not work out for the moment. We go back to the other corner. Three minutes to go. Will not get bumped out of net. Nice try. That one's high up. Left back down, and the defense in front for Pearl will hold off. Oh, oh what no. What just happened? I think Jax got demoed after he hit the ball. He puts it into the corner. He grabs boost, and some... I think the demo explosion just pushed that ball. He must have gotten demoed, and whether it was the explosion or the extra momentum from the from the demo itself pushed that ball in. I have never seen that before in my life. 
that's just a, a really unfortunate situation because you know you you, can't, you got a player in your corner and they're uh, very low speed you're coming back and you have a lot of momentum why not go for that demo right but uh, a real deal i think might have just you know accidentally put that one into his own net that is the most interesting goal i've seen all weekend <laughs> Not sure how that happened, but regardless, if you're Greyhound Gold, I mean, that, that it's probably not going to happen again. You're thanking your lucky stars for that. On the other side, though, the blue are saying, we'll take you, and we'll, we'll just get one right back. It's the bump off Snoob and the assist. Minister T-Rex gets that, and then Real Gamer punches it in. 2-1 lead. Real deal going to just wipe the slate clean there, much like how we saw Slark do it earlier. Uh, you know, he, he makes a bit of a misstep. Uh, an unfortunate situation that you're involved in that results in a goal or not a goal. Um, and then he just immediately comes back and, you know, says, Hey, I've redeemed myself. I've, I've made it, you know, reinstated our lead. Let's get back into this. And this is the momentum swing you do need. If you are the Greyhound blue, a game like this, where you can show that you can command all aspects of the field will allow you to feel more comfortable and settle in as a unit. There's the cross. Into the corner we go. Jack's 250 points, a goal and a shot and a save as well. Snoob barely crossing 40. Finally, we'll do so. One, only one shot. Jack's again, who's kind of stepped up for the Greyhound gold. Evil on the other side. Could be MVP of this matchup to this point. Plays that one through the corner. Pearl going to get there with a goal as well. 50% from the field. We're going to keep this one on the ground and flip it out to midfield. No one was there to cross. So unfortunately, this possession kind of goes by the wayside and they give it right back to the gold. Not a lot of uh, action going on in midfield here. It's just kind of Greyhound Blue turtling around their net and with a one goal lead and a minute on the clock, that can be a dangerous game to play. Evil once again with that demo on the back check. It's, it's very hard to get past him simply because of that scare factor coming in behind. Uh, when you're moving up with the ball, you don't really have time to settle it when you have a player just chasing you down like that. Minute left. And we will see a 2-1 series count. Greyhound Gold still with the lead, but the blue coming back. And certainly after a disastrous, I wouldn't even, it's not even like an own goal. It was just a disastrous, oh. fortunate series of events that led them to a tie game. They come back down the field and score immediately. Stopping this, Minister T-Rex loses the 50, but... Teammates are there for support. 32 seconds to go. Jack's out to midfield. The cross will be there. But it's a low hanging. It's a low hanging one. As it goes to the corner. And over one pearl breakaway chance. That's going to be a goal. That's going to be 3 1. And that's going to be game number three for the Greyhound Blue. Pearl's been very good so far, just as a, as a pure scorer for greyhound blue just you know punching home the chances that he gets not failing at those i mean in the first series we saw a lot of opportunities where they're just a bit off target pearl is definitely uh, on target with all of his opportunities maybe not doing so much away from the ball but just making sure that he's ready for those opportunities cross there four seconds to go and that'll do it so the greyhound blue take game three and they will be down only one game now in the series, but for the other side, for the ground gold. Not a lot of offense in that one. They had to recover a lot of the times on those long transitions, and they were just trying to hold off the wave after wave after wave of the Greyhound Blue. But I have a feeling that, again, this one might be going the distance. We might be going seven, because the momentum seems to be on the gold side. If there was any series to go seven, you'd think it'd be one between two teams from the same school yeah. at this level. I mean, that was a, a good good series for, or both good game from both teams, I'd say, to add to this series. And uh, it's nice to see Blue bounce back. Uh, that was definitely a must win for them. Going down 3-0 is, is disaster waiting to happen. You have to play near perfect Rocket League for the you know, next four games in a row. And we all know how this game can be. It's a cruel mistress sometimes. And it <laughs> you can do everything right that you want to do and still be punished for it. So really, really happy to see uh, Blue get on the board there. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get into game number four. I can do math, I promise. Let's get into game number four. And let's see who's going to take it. 2-1 series lead for the gold. Will they make it 3-1, or will the Greyhound Blue ride that wave of momentum and ride that victory into a tie series? OK, 
Okay, Evil gets a chance to move it up a little bit here. And we'll see if Jax can come help punish, but not a lot going on early in the game. Still kind of a story of, of Greyhound Gold trying to mount attacks from the offensive zone. Greyhound Blue content to sit in their net and, you know, try to go all the way end to end with their attacks. We'll see if that story changes throughout this game. That one's close. Demo. Now you have a chance to swing this around for the cross. Nice touch from Pearl. We'll get into the back of the net, but Vildale Gamer could not finish the play. Now the transition comes out, but the ceiling will fall in favor oh, of the no. Greyhound Gold. It's kept up. A couple of demos do come out. Jax leaving off the play. Here comes Evil through the corner. Centered. Is anyone there for the cross? They will be. Second touch almost works out. Jax sends that one to the other side. Gold's been doing well. I mean, despite that last game, they're kind of it seemed like they're back to their their roots of the first couple of matchups here where they're able to maintain a lot better sustained pressure than their counterparts here. Let me keep that one up. About two minutes gone now. Over one, not gonna happen. 50 win for Greyhound Gold. Real deal gamer. Circling back. It's Minister T-Rex. Tries to extend it. The pinch there, comes the cross. Evil, back down to the ground. And the long flank around. Again, a couple of long clears for both teams. No one has scored yet in this game four. Over the top and still not a lot going on in terms of these teams, but Looks like Snoop's trying to find Jax, who's been, you know, probably the most creative player for Greyhound Gold to try to spark some kind of offense here heading into the final three. And, oh, that could be good, but that's a nice save actually there from Snoop. That had a lot more disguised power on it, and Real Deal is going to punch it home. That initial shot, I just think, surprised Snoop. He wasn't really able to get the clear that he wanted, and then Jax with a bit of a mistouch there, and that'll go punished by Real Deal. Yeah, you got to take advantage of those missed touches as well. 1-0 lead. Greyhound Blue. Fighting to tie this series up. That one, though, ricochets around. Centers itself out for Greyhound Gold. No one there to meet it, though. The extension to the sidewall. Back down. Follow-up touch. Not going to be there. And that cross would have worked if anyone else from Greyhound Blue was in position. But now Evil's going to take it out. Off the ceiling to Jax. Redirect down. Saved away. We go back to midfield. Yeah, I hate to harp on, you know, creativity or being fancy, but I, I think that Greyhound Gold might just need to get a little bit more fundamental with it. Uh, the way that they're going for these multi-touch passing goals, I mean, that's that might not work in a scrappy game the way that this one's been going. Sure. Sometimes the simplest is the best. Circles around. They're connecting on the hits, but... Defense has been there for both teams. Jax back down to the ground. He'll keep it there. Here's a chance. Oh, I love the hesitation as well. Doesn't need to get too creative. The simplest is the best. Keeps it on the ground. A little bit of a hezzy step right there. And then punches it fast enough to get it past both defenders. Tie game 1-1. Yeah, I do really like that play there. I mean, Trex was was hot on his tail, and I think that that hesitation was a, kind of a double-purposed one in the sense that he not only puts Trex out of position by avoiding the bump or possibly the demo, he was able to, to stall up enough to confuse the goaltender. Jack's back to midfield. Trying to flip over will not do so. We might be going to OT here with how back and forth this game has been. And this is a big game as well. If you're Greyhound Blue, you're trying to tie up the series. If you're Greyhound Gold, you're up 3-1, essentially series point. And you're probably in a good position to be able to walk away with it. Oh, Pearl. Maybe you just punch that one down towards the bottom of the bar instead of trying to send it towards the center of the net. Still, though, great defensive effort. Stay at 1-1 with 46 seconds to go. This one's going to wrap around. Is anyone there to cross? They will be. That's the goal for Evil. One goal, a shot, an assist, and a save across the board. One of everything. Snoop sets this one up in Evil, taking a page out of Pearl's notebook and punches it right where the defense can't get it, though. 2-1, 43 seconds to go. 
yeah, I mean, this this game definitely not over. The series not over, but Evil's got to be the MVP in my eyes. I mean, yeah. he's doing it all out there. Is he, can you really ask for anything better than a player who's able to put up defensive numbers, who's able to be reliable in the midfield, and putting up good passes? I mean, he's just been a very, very solid player all around and really the backbone of this gold team. Yeah, absolutely. 2-1. 19 seconds. Greyhound Blue trying to keep this ball up, get it across the field. They'll do so. They'll get it to the sidewall. Now numbers starting to funnel in. Bumped off the play is Jax. Evil's going to carry it out to Jax, who gets back into play just in the nick of time to be able to keep this ball up and just extend it out. Make it as difficult as possible. They have to kill it. They'll keep it up into the corner. Taken away by Evil. 50 win. Goes the way of the blue. This one's kept up. Can you cross? You will. It's a little too sharply crossed, though, and the redirect from the gold. Helps them out on that one, so the defense stands up strong. And it's a 3-1 series lead for the Greyhound Gold. They are now knocking on the end of the series. One more game is all they need to be champions. Yeah, and that's the thing right now. You've got the, not only the pressure of potentially losing to your rivals who you've screamed against all season long, all school year long, and potentially bumped into in the hallways. You know, you got the friendly rivalry with them. I'm sure it's all fun and games, you know, between the two teams, but the pressure is definitely on blue at this point. They've got to be feeling it going into this final game. And uh, ultimately, I think Gold's probably going to be able to run away with this one, I think, sooner than later because they've just been so solid at both ends of the field and yeah. they're able to find offense when they need it. They're definitely built the right way in terms of, you know, the roles of each of their players. I, I think there's, mm. a, there's a lot that can happen in this game, but Gold's definitely... Uh, I'm leaning towards them being the ones to take this. Yeah, me too. Let's go into game number five. Will this be the last one of the series? Will we see another 4-1 here? Will we see a 4-2, possibly a game seven? Regardless, all I know at the end of the day is that we have seen good Rocket League, and that's what matters most. But Greyhound Gold are closing in on taking the series 4-1, which would not really be a great testament to how back and forth these matchups have been. But still, they are knocking on the door. Greyhound Gold up 3-1 in the series at the moment. There's a shot a little bit high on that one. Follow-up from Jax. Good enough. Gets the angle, and the English on that ball rolls it to the left. It's a 1-0 lead off the start. Yeah, it was a good first shot from Evil, and definitely a great job of Jax to follow that one up. You definitely don't stop playing until you see that explosion. So uh, I, I really like the way that he just comes in and finishes that off. It looked like a sure goal for Evil, but just in an attempt to get it over any final last-ditch defenders, he puts it off the crossbar, and oh, Evil again, right off the draw, 2-0, 30 seconds into this game. And sometimes the, the snowball can just fall too quickly for a team and you just get behind so quickly. 4.32 to play, so much time. We have a whole game of Rock League to go, but you are down two goals. And with the fact that this game has been so back and forth, or I guess you should say, this series has been so back and forth, two goals can feel like five. So we go back into the corner. Snoob going to keep it up. Anyone else there to score? Jack slow roller. Trying to extend, gets it. Jack's second effort works out well. 3-0. And I'm starting to get a little worried for the Greyhound Blue. Yeah, you can really sense the pressure now. I mean, not only is that was this a must-win game, but you're not even a minute in and you're already down three. Jack's just reading the goaltender perfectly there, and the Jackson Evil dynamic duo up front has been enough so far for Gold in this potentially final game of the series. That one's going to hang back down as well. And these long clears, I know we still have four minutes to play, but long clears will kill 15, maybe 20 seconds off the clock, and that adds up over a game, so... We're not into the two-minute warning yet, but certainly you're, you're getting close. We've already hit minute number three now. So this ball's kept up. Slowing it down as Minister. Into the corner. Jacks for a third goal? Possibly. There's a follow-up shot. A little bit high as well. And again, it just it puts more pressure on the defense of Greyhound Blue to try to slow this ball down and get it out cohesively. Jack's going to come in with the interception. He'll get the touch as well. Into the corner we go. And this one stalls out at midfield. So again, it's just kind of back and forth. There's a demo in net. They really want this fourth goal. If they get the fourth goal, I mean, I think it'd be safe to say this game might very well be over. It just does not seem like the offense has been there for the Greyhound Blue. And it's hard to, to, to criticize them for that because they're just getting absolutely uh, bullied in their own half. Finally, the cross comes in. 
The second touch lets great enough, but oh. the, the double commit from Jax with the epic save, Snoob clearing out the last offensive player. And now we go the length of the field. Jax could have had a goal there if he kept that one on the ground and got a little bit creative on the freestyle, but still, there's a punch. And finally, some life is back in the Greyhound Blue. Yeah, Real Deal's been good stepping up in these uh, last few moments of last game and this one as well. Um, he's definitely doing his best to keep his team in the game, but I'm just still a little bit worried, even with three minutes left on the clock, the way the Greyhound Gold are controlling the pace of play, they're definitely rotating a bit sharper than their opponents, and you can tell the pressure is getting to Greyhound Blue. They, they're double committing left and right on almost every ball at this point in their defensive end just because of how unsure they are that they'll be able to beat their opposition in one-on-ones. Oh, wow. Evil. Two goals. Single-handedly picking apart the defense. Snoop, who leaves it up. Evil recovers on the play, and then just... I mean, not much you can do. So as quickly as Greyhound Blue feel like they can breathe again with a 3-1 deficit, they are now down again a goal. 4-1. Two minutes to play, and we have now hit, essentially, crunch time for Greyhound Blue. At this moment, you have to get extremely aggressive. A little bit too aggressive. If you want a chance, you're down three goals, and it comes to just communication and decisiveness. Where is the decision-making for the team? They have to get this ball out and try to formulate a hit as a roster. But nothing is manifesting. There's a follow-up, 5-1. I think this might be the series. Yeah, that's a hattie for Evil, and that's exactly you know what he deserves. Again, my series MVP for sure yeah. uh, was Evil coming into this game before we had even started, and he's just putting up numbers now. This one's definitely a little bit too far out of reach, I'd say. Uh, yeah. They would need a, a, a catastrophic breakdown from Greyhound Gold, and right now they're just driving around having some fun in the server, it looks like, the way they're getting creative and uh that can also throw you off you know you've been playing against a fundamentally solid team all series long here and then all of a sudden they just start throwing these massive aerials left and right and multiple passing plays it's it can throw you off as a as a team fighting from behind yeah and you can see it looks a little bit like the greyhound blue are deflated there's the best shot they've had all game but they look a little deflated a little bit slow to the ball and it just it's it's hard to to not be when you're down five one but Certainly, this is the moment you must meet if you want to become a champion. On the other side, though, you just got to kill the ball. They've killed about a minute or so off the clock, a minute 25 to go. And uh, if you're the Greyhound goal, continue to be aggressive on these challenges. Just get the ball out of your blue half. It doesn't matter if you try to go for a shot. Just try to clear it out. It looks like they're going to do that. Evil circling back underneath. There's a chance. Pinches it on the crossbar. And they'll get this one out awkwardly. Finally, they will do it to midfield, and they extend it. Snoob going to kill it into the corner. A minute to go now. And they've taken away about 30 or so seconds. And with that, with four goals, you need to score basically a goal every 10 seconds at this moment. And it doesn't look like the Greyhound Blue are going to be able to do it, which means at this moment, I think it would be safe to call that Carmel High School, regardless, are going to be the champions of the Central Region. But the Greyhound Gold of Jack, Snoob, and Evil will be the representatives and the champions of Carmel High School, and they will be the Central Region champions. Yeah, again, yeah, I want to go back to the fact that this school has two teams in the finals here, so they were that much better than everybody else in their region, and you know, hats off to them and their coach as well for you know putting together two rosters of this caliber, having them maybe yeah. practice against each other as much as they have. You know, it, these guys are all, all six of these players, very talented. And it was a well-fought series from both sides. Uh, at the end of the day, I guess your prediction was correct. Carmel is the champion. I, I think that we both kind of hit the nail on the head there. We predicted that Carmel might walk away with the series. And certainly, you know, we did our homework because they are representing the Central Region as the high school Rocket League play versus fall 2020 champions. Congratulations to Jack Snoop and Evil and the Greyhound Gold. Congratulations to Carmel High School uh, for becoming the Central Region Champions. And it only took five games, but certainly in that game five, we saw which team was the better team. There was Jackson, even Evil, Evil, my MVP of the series. But your thoughts uh, kind of closing out that series on Evil's performance before we throw it to a commercial. 
Yeah, Evil was was very very good and throughout the whole series, you know, he played the entire field really well. His visualization of the field was well or it was it was really good and, and he was able to actually just anticipate everything that was going to happen. It was almost like he was playing chess. He was thinking a couple moves ahead about what he was going to do or what his opponent was going to do against him and he was able to read it and he was always in the right place at the right time. Uh, and, you know, I have a feeling that, you know, if, if people haven't noticed him yet, uh, I think, you know, a few CRL offers might come knocking on his door if he keeps playing like that on the big stage. Absolutely. Well, let's throw it to a commercial break. When we come back, it's our final best of seven of the tournament. Pacific Region, you're up next. It's Hemet High School versus Okanagan, Michigan High School. I hope I said that right. We'll find out after we come back from this break. <laughs> 